Hello everyone, very exciting video today. I'm basically going to be filming kind of like a bookshelf scavenger hunt vibe, but I think it's different to that challenge that was going around a few years ago. Basically, I just want to kind of go through random books on my bookshelf, talk about them. So if I've read them, you know, give a little mini review, decide if I'm going to unhaul it because I also just want to do some unhauling of books, talk about the origins of where I got the book and stuff like that. So I asked on Instagram to send numbers between one and eight because I have eight shelves going across, one and six because I have six going downwards, and then one to 30 because some shelves have like, you know, around 30 books. And if I have less than 30 books, I can just like do a few rounds until I get to that number. Hopefully that makes sense and thank you to everyone who sent through numbers on Instagram. And I know, how freaking cute is my phone case with the phone charm? Obviously they're from Casetify who is the sponsor of today's video, so thank you so much to them. I have so many cute phone cases from Casetify, they are my favourite place to get phone cases. And my iPad case and everything, I just love their designs, their durability, how protective they are. The clear cases are their most requested cases and I just love it. I'm obviously rocking a clear case right now. Their clear cases are UV Defender Tech optimised to prevent yellowing and allowing the clear cases to have long lasting clarity. Just look how beautiful and sleek it is. They also offer quality protection. Their clear cases have actually exceeded military grade standards and supports up to 6.6 .6 feet drop protection. Okay, I'm going to drop my phone. But don't worry, you don't need to have your heart racing. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. But it's okay, my phone's doing the case by case. So it's all good. Literally every time I drop my phone, I'm like, don't worry, it has the case by case on it. So with this super slim design, they've ensured an optimal ergonomic experience with a comfy grip, anti-slip bumpers, and tactile buttons. Their cases are also made of 65% recycled and plant-based materials, which is one of my favorite things about Casetify. And how freaking cute is my phone charm? Obviously perfect Christmassy vibes, and I love the little C initial. You can of course customize the cases too, so I have this one as well, which of course says Chloe. And I also love their bounce cases. How freaking cute is this? I love the snake design with the pink, obviously. And the bounce cases are their most protective case. These expanded corners allows your phone to just simply bounce. So you don't have to worry about your heart dropping when you drop your phone because your phone will just simply bounce. This case features a new EcoShock impact absorption technology. So the bounce cases can actually withstand drops at up to 21.3 feet. <laughs> Literal insanity. The protection actually offers six times the military standard and they have over 2,000 prints to choose from, which I just love because I just love all my accessories to be unique to me. And why wouldn't you want your phone case to be just as unique as you are? With Case Defines Artist Program, they have so many diverse and global partners and I love that they are supporting artist communities. So they have so many different styles. So one of the most popular styles is cartoon and that's definitely one of my favorites. And one of my favorite artists on there is Foxy Illustrations who do so many cute bunny designs. So if you want to get a case to buy case for yourself, you can go to casetify.com slash books with Chloe to get 15% off your entire order. So thank you so much to case to buy for sponsoring this video. Okay, so the first numbers, four, four, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, <laughs> so the first is this book, which I haven't read yet, but no, I can't even lie. <laughs> no, obviously this is Bunny by Mona Award. This has its own moment on the shelf. And I love this book with my whole heart. If you don't know, this is my favorite book. It inspired the name Chloe Bunny and I just adore it. It's psychological horror with dark academia vibes and also it's hilarious. There are so many layers. It's honestly like my favorite thing because I always say this, but when you read this book, it's just a bizarre fever dream experience. But then when you reread it, you start to notice a lot more and you start to unpack a lot of the commentary and you know, a lot of things start to make sense. And it's just like, wow, like it's honestly mind blowing. And I've never read any book like it. It's just so perfect in my eyes. So of course it has its moment. This is the hardcover. I believe like this is the US hardcover, but it is out of print now. So I'm sorry for that. I do get a lot of questions like, how can I buy this? I don't think you can get it anymore. I remember Caitlin actually first told me she was going to get this and she was like oh I'm scared it's going to go out of print and then I was like oh really do you think I should get it do you think I'll like it and she's like yeah and I'm so happy I listened to her because I would be sad if I didn't have this copy because it's just so pretty like the black with the pink obviously iconic obviously we'll not be unhauling that <laughs> okay username Kevin Kelly shout out to you um three four two three four Okay, so that landed on the Power of Attachment, which is non-fiction. That is my non-fiction shelf. 
and I haven't read this yet, but I really want to. I have had really good things and I wanted to read more about attachment styles ever since I read Attached, which is my introduction into reading about attachment styles. And that was honestly life-changing. I learned so much about myself and why certain relationships were the way they were. And I just highly recommend that book because it's just so important to, well, I think it's really important to know your attachment style because it definitely can give you a lot of information as to why you act certain ways in different situations. Anyway, yeah, so this one has also gotten really good reviews and I'm excited to read it, even though I haven't read it yet, but yeah. Okay, 7, 3, 24. Okay, so this is the seventh shelf. 3, 24. 22, 23, 24. <laughs> This is my original arc that I got of Heartstopper Volume 1. Honestly, such good times when I first got this book and obviously first read it. Very, very happy and I just think this is going to be amazing. I've seen so many great reviews on it. What a time and knowing that like obviously it's now been adapted into a series and it's like so popular and brings so much happiness to people. I could honestly cry. I obviously just love Heartstopper so much. It's by Nick and Charlie who fall in love, and all their amazing friends as well. And it's just beautiful. Absolutely love this, and like, I'll always just cherish this copy. Heartstopper, just love you. Okay, 2, 6, 18. Okay, that shelf was actually just for my 2021 life journal. Oh my god, it's so huge! So maybe I'll just go to the 18th page and show you that. So this is just a cute little spread I did for BTS. Caitlin, Kevin and I did a K-pop sesh and watched heaps of BTS videos and I'm back in it. And it feels so good, love them so much. And they make me so happy and I also decided Jungkook is officially my new bias. That was honestly a really good time. Okay, 8, 4, 29. Okay, so this is 8, 4. So obviously I have four books in here. And honestly, maybe this is my first unhaul moment. So these books are really cool. Um, I saw them at a bookstore once and they were on sale as well. I think I got them for like $15. They are really cool. They are gothic fantasy science fiction short stories and I have gothic fantasy short stories, detective mysteries and chilling ghost stories. And they're really cool but do I need to own them? Like no offense I'm not going to read them so they're kind of just for decoration. And obviously like they're really stunning. But maybe it's time to move on. I feel like someone else might appreciate it more at this point. Yep, I think we're saying goodbye. Okay, first unhaul moment. Okay, 7, 3, 13. Okay, we have another moment for this shelf. This is like the arcs that I've read. So 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, we have this big boy. Cry with the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. I love this book. This is a standalone adult fantasy. It has a stunning romance between two girlings and lots of dragons. So yeah, loved this. Obviously it's super long, but I remember it being super engaging and I felt so lucky and still feel so lucky to own this arc. But yeah, like when I first got it, I was like, oh my God, hello there. <laughs> um, I think I got it in like 2018 or 2019. But yeah, I know that the next book in this world is actually out and Kaz is reading it and she's really loving it. So I definitely want to read that. But yeah, love this. Okay, 7, 5, 27. Okay, we have this shelf. Okay, we have Waiting for Spring, volume 13. I'm pretty sure this is the last volume in this series. I have read all the volumes. And this was actually such a fun moment. So basically, this is about this girl who is in like a love triangle with these two guys. So it's just a fun romance time. And one of the guys, oh, so beautiful. And he plays basketball. Like, it's, it's really stunning. And he was definitely the one I was like, no offense, surely him. It was one of those annoying love triangles where I'm like, Okay, it's so obvious you need to be with him. The other guy sucks. Like, I hated the other guy. Like, honestly, I remember reading this series and just getting so angry. Like, wanting to throw the book across the room because the other guy, I can't remember what his name was. I think Aya-chan. <laughs> it's all coming back to me. It's all coming back to me. He was so annoying. He said gross things. He did gross things. Ew. This was definitely a fun time because, like, there were so many cute moments where I'd be like, but then I'd be like... <laughs> So it evoked a lot of emotion out of me, which I love when I consume a story. So yeah, <laughs> very fun time. Honestly, maybe I do need to start a new cute like manga series. So I have this one, which I haven't started yet. So maybe this one needs to happen. 
Okay, 2713. Okay, that was my Alice in Wonderland shelf. So it has all of, well, most of the copies that I own of Alice in Wonderland. So this is one of the Canterbury Classics editions. So it has the sprayed edges, the stunning like cloth bound cover. And yeah, I do really love this edition. It has like the classic illustrations and the ribbon bookmark. Okay, 3517. Oh, my poetry shelf. So that was my poetry that I've read shelf. And it landed on Flux by Orion Colotto. And I loved this. Um, let me get one of my favourites up. Loss after love is like a scab. It will never heal if you continue to pick at it. All scabs turn into scars and all scars have a story to tell. So I guess you kind of suck with me forever, whether you like it or not. <laughs> okay, six, six, six. Okay, so that landed on my Fairy Loot edition of Chain of Gold. So freaking beautiful absolutely love it and I'm so thankful to own this I love Chain of Gold so much and actually Chain of Thorns the last book in the last hour series this is the first book comes out in January and I was like okay ew, I definitely need to read Chain of Iron because I got to page like 100 and I never continued so I need to finally read and finish that in January and then read Chain of Thorns so I'm definitely gonna vlog that moment I'm very excited but yeah love this edition oh how could I forget Look at the beautiful people. Okay, 3, 2, 24. Okay, so that landed on Shiver by Junji Ito. That was my Junji Ito shelf. And I have read this. I remember loving it. I don't think there's many or any Junji Ito that I didn't really love. Although I think this is the one that might have had this really weird last story. Oh no, no, it's not this one. But this one had a story that really triggered my trypophobia. And it was really hard to read and it was just... Disgusting. But yeah, love Junji Ito. He's obviously the horror manga king. Loved this and this is a good reminder that I still need to read his other books that I haven't read yet. Because also he came out with a new one recently. I've fallen behind. Okay, 7, 3, 29. Oh, back to this shelf again. Oh, we've landed on Girls of Storm and Shadow. I still haven't read this. That is disgraceful. So this is the sequel to Gods of Heaven and Fire, which I loved. It is a YA fantasy and it features a stunning romance between these two girlies. And yeah, I really loved it. I was so excited for this. And then I think I got to page 100 and didn't continue, but it wasn't because I wasn't loving it. I think I just prioritized other books. And now I'm like, is it too late? I mean, if I feel like it, I obviously will read it, but I could never let go, you know, because I mean, I do hope to read it one day. <laughs> it came out. November 2019 and I got the arc and now it's 2022 nearly 2023 <laughs> okay 6 4 24 okay I can't do that because that's just my little bunny statue <laughs> 1 2 3 finally we're getting some love for the first shelf okay 1 2 1 2 3 okay so that shelf was my Korean fiction shelf and I think we might have another unhaul moment. So this is, I believe in a thing called Love by Maureen Gu. This is YA contemporary. I haven't read it. And I remember I really wanted to read it because a lot of people talked about it and said it was really cute. But I think the time has passed for me because I'm not really excited to read it anymore. Like I doubt I'll ever read it. And if I do read it, I feel like it will be cute, but it won't be like anything that I'm like, oh my God, you know what I mean? So I feel like I'd much rather give this to someone who would appreciate it and who would get super excited about it. So I think that is going to be an up on whole moment. Okay, three, three, 13. So that was my pink bookshelf, beautiful pink spine. This is Not a Happy Family. And this is a thriller that I got from Book of the Month. Haven't read it yet, but it definitely sounds fun. It's basically set at this family dinner and I think one of them turns up dead and they're kind of like, no offense, wasn't one of you because you want to inherit the house. <laughs> so it sounds like a very fun, dramatic time. Okay, three, six, twelve. Oh, it's coming to haunt me. It's coming to haunt me. Girls of Open Fire. I think it's telling me that I need to read the second book. This is such an amazing edition though, because it came from one of my subscribers, Tess, and they got this signed copy for me because they knew I loved the book. And it's personalized for me as well, so I'll always cherish this. I obviously love it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna do a few more. Three, five, fifteen. Okay, that landed on The Mermaid's Voice Returns and this one by Amanda Lovelace. I'm pretty sure that I remember this being like pretty underwhelming. Like there were definitely some stunning moments. Like I have some traps of some of my favorites, but I'm pretty sure I was a little underwhelmed. So 
Sometimes the best thing you can do for yourself is to let the past remain in the past. Darling, shh, it was never as pretty as you like to pretend it was. It's time to give your present a fair chance. After all, it's never once given up on you. That's beautiful. Oh, I like that. 7, 4, 27. I gave that as the example. And yeah, should probably do it. So, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4... Okay, so that landed on The View Was Exhausting. I was really excited about this book, and for some reason I've lost a bit of that excitement. It does sound really cool. The bold, swoon-worthy and utterly modern debut about how truth, fame and privilege and how we look now. Eh. Okay, I'm gonna read the first sentence. Wynne went down to meet Leo herself in the lobby of La Reserve on the first day. He was sitting on his suitcase, one hand in his pocket, white t-shirt and jeans, brown leather shoes. He looked patient. Hmm. Not gonna lie, contemplating unhauling this, but I'm gonna keep it a bit longer and see how I feel. I just really wanna have books on my shelf that like really excite me or books that I've already read and loved. So I'm trying to be like quite ruthless with my unhauling these days, you know? But I think I'm gonna keep it for a bit longer. Okay, I'm gonna do one more. One, one, one. Okay, so I have Orochi by Kazuo Umes, which I was planning to read this year. Maybe I will since the year's not over, but I really want to trade this in October, I think. This is a horror manga that has really good reviews. And it's basically about a mysterious young woman who slithers her way into the lives of unsuspecting people like the legendary multi-tailed serpent for which she is named Orochi. Yeah, good reminder that I need to read this. So yeah, these are the books I'm unhauling. I actually was expecting a few more, but I feel like a lot of people actually submitted like similar numbers. So I feel like I kept landing on the same shelf. It was really interesting. <laughs> like I had to cut out a lot of takes where I landed on the like exact same shelf and number. And I was like, what's going on? <laughs> anyway, this was so fun. I would honestly love to do it again. So let me know if you'd want to see it again. I just love like going to my bookshelves and like, you know, talking about like, oh yeah, this book, you know what I mean? And I feel like this is a nice, fun way to do it. But yeah, so thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much once again to Case Five for sponsoring this video. And don't forget, you can go to casefy.com slash books with Chloe to get 15% off your order. If you're looking for more content from me, I have a Patreon always linked below, and that is where I upload extra content, like extra vlogs. We do a monthly live show, we do a monthly video read, etc. I have all my socials linked below, including my Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash chloebunny underscore, and that is where I stream games and just chatting. I hope you're all having a good day or night, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.